It was a year ago when we all had it figured out here at Churchill Downs. When we talked up Epicenter or maybe 19 other horses. And then there was a casual mention of also eligibles. And we hope you didn't blink and miss our wisdom about Rich Strike. Today, we originate from the world headquarters of racing in Section 322 to preview every horse in the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. Saturday around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and we've convened some familiar names on this sixth annual Hardcore Handicappers edition of the Ron Flatter Racing Pod to preview America's Greatest Race from our team at Horse Racing Nation. Let's get some hellos very briefly first from the boss himself, Mark Midland. Hello, Mark. Hey, Ron. Ready to go. And, and from the world of handicapping and his fair odds, Ed DeRosa. I am also ready to go. And we welcome back from Las Vegas. Oh, this is great. The man who's made more appearances on this podcast, well, other than me, uh, he's the Dean of Derby Futures. Now he's a DraftKings sports book. He'll introduce us to DK Horse. Hello again to Johnny Avello. Good morning, guys. Good to be with you. Uh, it's great to have you along. We will get into each of the horses here in the Kentucky Derby. We're going to go th from 1 through 20. Also mention the also eligible. So just in case last year happens again this year, we'll make sure you're plugged in. I do want to, though, Mark, let me uh, ask you if I could. Uh, we'll do the, uh, the promotional part here because uh, our friend Mike Shuddy, we're talking about Rich Strike. Last year, the super screener from Mike Shuddy, he said, uh, he, if you uh, got your updated edition on Saturday morning, he had Rich Strike in there, didn't he? Well, not only that, he uh, he said, we've got to email all the customers. So we emailed all the customers and said, add right, Rich Strike to all your tickets. And uh, it was just a weird occurrence, right, that no, no horse had ever drawn into the Kentucky Derby the day of the race. So we were sort of unprepared. Customers were unprepared. We did email everybody, say, this horse is a long shot. He's got a chance. Uh, use them in all your tickets and uh, we didn't uh, actually prepare like trifectas and superfectas with him uh, so hard to say we whether we would have uh, used them or not uh, on top but Mike loved him you know he said that uh, he had one of the top long shot scores on the super screener and uh, that's one of the great things about the Kentucky Derby super screener is it not only ranks the top contenders but it has a top uh, long shot score and uh it's just an invaluable tool if you want to play the race and uh, make some money. And there's so much money to be made on the Kentucky Derby. Uh, why not get a little help? So the Kentucky Derby Super Screener, you can get it at picks.horseracingnation.com. Proven system for Derby picks based on years of analysis and results. And if you followed the Super Screener lately, it has been white hot this spring. Trust me, I, I got nice payoff at Keeveland thanks to some advice that Mike gave us. And by the way, he will be on the Friday edition of the podcast. Like Mark said, go to picks.horseracingnation.com, P-I-C-K-S dot horseracingnation.com. Look for the super screener and you'll find a package that will suit you just in time for Kentucky Derby 2023. Ron Flatter along with Mark Midland, Ed DeRosa and Johnny Avello. So let's get right into it now for Kentucky Derby 149. We'll go ahead and give the uh, the ordinal number on that, if we will. And we should tell you that the weather should be nice. Uh, we're hearing maybe a 10 to 20 percent chance of a shower on Saturday. Friday's the day we're a little more worried about, but we're hearing about a uh, 70 some odd degree day here at Churchill Downs for the race that will be the run for the Roses. Let's go to the field then of 20 plus the also eligibles. We start with number one hit show. One of four in for Brad Cox in this race. Candy Ride the Sire, ridden by Manny Franco, uh, was second, just missing by a nose against Lord Miles in the Wood Memorial, although he was the favorite in that race, a beaten favorite. He's 30 to one on the morning line. And so, uh, Mark, why don't we tee it up with you? Okay. Well, we got 23 horses to get through, so I'll try to be quick on this one. <laughs> um, it's just <laughs> tough to see, you know, him having a shot. Um, the withers that he won was a, a very fast race that really set up for him. He got in a three horse photo in the wood. He just doesn't seem as fast as some of these. He's stuck on the rail. He's going to have a, probably have a bad trip and drop back. So for me, uh, no interest in hit show. Now, what about you, uh, Ed? Uh, definitely sounds like I have more interest than Mark. I thought one thing interesting just from the PPs is he's been favored in all five of his races. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to be 30 to one plus. Not that that's a reason to bet him. The rail certainly does no favors. So certainly more against than I am for. 
Uh, but there are, as we know from my fair odds, plenty of horses I think have less of a chance than Hit Show. If I'm right about everything else and we'll get to the horses I like, I won't let Hit Show beat me in third or fourth of a Superfecta, but I have to be right about everything else to get him in the mix. All right, Johnny, it's up to you. Hit Show. Yeah, like Ed said, you know, he's the favorite every race and, uh, you know, and he's going to this huge price. He he may even be more than 30. Um, you know, I don't, the only thing I can look at the horse to try to find if he, you know, if he likes the track at all and he has the one race at Churchill and he didn't really do well in that one race. That one post to me is always scary in this race. It's only Ferdinand's the only horse to win out of that one post. And I don't think Hit Show is a Ferdinand. So uh, I'm passing because he's going to drop way back. That's his running style. And then, you know, where does he go? I've seen some great jocks with decent horses still not be able to maneuver from that post. So, yeah, um, it's a pass for me. Yeah, there is the old thing now that we have the new starting gate, but it's still everybody trying to bottleneck in on the rail to get better positioning to the first turn. So there's that quarter mile uh, cavalry charge. And we should also note, as you said, Ferdinand, last to win from post one in 1986. Let's go to number two, and uh, we'll continue the Brad Cox parade. Mm -hmm. And this is a horse that, uh, well, might lead at the beginning of the race. Will he lead at the end of the race? And that is verifying the Justify uh, Colt, who will be ridden by Tyler Gaffalione, was second by a neck in a terrific race at Lexington at Keeneland in the Bluegrass, losing to Tappet Trice. Uh, before that, his uh, wins were in a maiden race and in an allowance. He is 15 to 1 on the morning line. Ed? I would say, I know some people have consternation about Tappet Trice's five posts. I think verifying is the one hurt most by all of the post draws. And the reason I think that is from post two, given his running style, he has to go. This isn't a matter of, oh, he can tuck and be mid pack. This horse definitely likes to be pressing the pace. He's never been more than three and a half lengths off the early pace. And if Tyler isn't aggressive from that two hole, he's going to be much further back than that. And I think that takes him out of his element. So the flip side then is if he has to be used harder than he's used to, to get position from the two hole that compromises his chances. I know plenty of people who like this horse at the price. So for that reason, I'm going to zag a little bit when I think others are zigging. I'm, he's dangerous. I'm worried about leaving him off, but at the price, I'm going to let him beat me. He's going to look to go wise against the wise is Ed. How about you, Johnny? He's definitely going out. Uh, and, and, uh, that's good. You know, you want your horse to get out. You want a horse somewhere in the top four or five positions and that's where he should be. The problem I have with him is that he usually gives it up. Now he, you know, he's won a couple of races, but, uh, when he gets out there, it seems like he just can't hold on. And if he's going to use that, exert that much energy to get to that spot, then he's probably going to give it up again. So um, I could see using him somewhere in, a, in your, you know, super effectives, trifectas, but I don't see him on the win spot. All right, Mark. Yeah, I think uh, Ed kind of nailed it. There's a lot of things against him on the inside here. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, based on our sire stats, justifies are winning about eight and a half percent in a dirt route. If you start taking it to dirt routes going further than nine furlongs, it's much less. Uh, they're not really great at turf routes or synthetic routes. So his sire is not getting horses that uh, you know, really want to go this mile and a quarter. So for me, uh, that and everything um, that's been said, I don't have any interest in him in the exacta. Um, I'm a little worried that, uh, and I'll talk about this a little more later, but most years, um, one of the horses on the pace will hold on for a piece, um, you know, and I'll uh, like even like a Shackleford goes to the lead and hangs on for four. And so I'm worried that uh, one of these uh, horses that I don't like might go to the lead and hang on for it for third or fourth. So I may defend defensively play him a little bit in the Superfecta that way. Verifying is the only horse that meets all of the criteria that has followed most winners in the last generation finishing strong under the final fractions theory advanced by Jenny Reese. Also with minimum numbers in speed figures and speed ratings, whether it's the buyer or the Briz or the time form, and also the style of the win. Although we know Rich Strike didn't exactly fit that style being forward as far as a stalker or a pace setter. But that's just a, a little something there that you, if you're looking at just all the analytics, that falls into place. Number three. 
two fills with that apostrophe. Larry Ravelli will be on the podcast with Cherith Loveberry, the jockey, on Friday to talk about him. Larry, of course, was a trainer who was a perennial leader at Arlington. Uh, may it rest in peace. A winner of the Jeff Ruby Stakes last time out on the Artificial, and that was at Turfway Park. Uh, this is a horse that has a win here at Churchill Downs on a sloppy track, and that was in the street sense uh, last fall. With all that in mind, the hard spun Colt is 12 to 1 on the morning line. We'll start with you, Johnny. Yeah, I see two fills as an average horse. Um, you know, he, he and moving forward with this horse, maybe he's going to be a good one on the turf. Uh, I think he's just a little bit in over his head. His last race was brilliant, by the way. You know, that JR Stakes. I don't know if he comes back with another race like that. Uh, so. You, you know, I, I see in a sloppy does okay. If he gets a sloppy track, that maybe helps his chances a little bit. But uh, I really don't have a lot of interest in him. Mark? I, I think this horse is live at a price. Uh, I don't agree with the morning line of 12 to 1. I think you're going to get closer to 16 or 18 to 1. Um, horses 4 for 8 lifetime. He comes in, you know, even though it was synthetic with the biggest figure in the field. Um He's got a nice style to kind of come from the middle of the pack a little bit. But uh, in the Risen Star, he was too far forward. I think uh, that in both races at Fairgrounds, he was too far forward. He was wide in the Risen Star. And I think he ran a good race, take, kind of get to the lead at the top of the stretch and got beat by Angel of Empire and Sun Thunder rolled by men at the end of the Risen Star. Um, if Jared Loveberry can work out a trip on the inside... We talked to them yesterday. They think they've got some ideas on how they can do it. I, th I think this is a player, uh, probably more for second or third, but uh, I think he has a shot. Ed? Uh, agree player. Also agree 12-1 to 1 is is too low. Maybe a little uh, Bataglia bias for his home track at Turfway Park. I One of the reasons I like this horse or from a rooting form standpoint is he fits the old school derby profile, well-seasoned at two, stakes winner at two, three legitimate prep races as a three-year-old uh, that used to be a big thing. And, and I'll just jump until, uh, street sense came along, but this is a horse with a lot of seasoning and bottom. And he is on my very short list of horses. I expect to be leading when they turn for home. Think of Jared works out the trip. This is one who's going to make his move and be on top by the time they uh, heads turn for home, as they say. And then we'll see if, you know, how far he can go and out sprint the likes of Forte and tap at trice, but He's in the mix for me. 12 to 1 would be a little light, uh, but as you know, Johnny knows this game, the, the, the markets mm. in Vegas say he's going to be a little higher than that. Mm. And I might note that uh, is this horse a morning glory or can he back up his workouts? He's fired bullets like crazy at Hawthorne. But then again, okay, Hawthorne. And it's the first derby for both Ravelli and Loveberry. Number four, confidence game. Keith DeSormo training, James Graham riding candy ride colt who was a winner in the rebel way back on february 25th training up to this race 10 weeks 20 to 1 on the morning line mark we'll go with you first on confidence game yeah it's hard to have confidence in in the confidence game here um with that layoff 70 days uh you know odd training style uh you don't know what you know exactly how much is going behind the scenes with the horse to take those breaks to not have the race um I, I don't like them i may use them um you know a, just a touch in in fourth or something like that with some of the horses that i really like if i'm trying to hit the super ed i i don't like them at all complete toss uh i think it's a lot harder to convince people on horses you like uh for this purpose if you're on this horse i would try to convince you not to use the lack of a prep at nine furlongs or beyond is a huge red flag. It just does not work out in the Derby. The layoff is ridiculous. I just see no path uh, that this horse can be better than 16 others to even be in there, 15 others to even be in the super. Total toss for me. Don't like the style. If he makes a little bit of a run, could be a Preakness or Belmont players. We mm. saw with Destin a few years ago, who was second in the Belmont to creator. Definitely a good horse. Looking forward to seeing where he goes from here, but Derby will not be his day. All right, Johnny. I could see the horse being used in the tries and supers. You know, I go back and look at his uh, his Churchill races. He's he's got a couple of wins over the track. 
one thing that did pop out at me is, and I agree with the guys, you know, he, the horse hasn't run seems like a half a year, but he's, <laughs> his, his workout at Churchill was really good, uh, you know, just last week. So um, obviously his, you know, he's, he certainly plays the part of a horse that belongs in a derby by that workout, but it, you know, it's been a long time. So I don't, I don't know. He's, I've talked to a few people that called me and told me they like him. Uh, and when they tell me they like him, sometimes that means for me is underneath. So I wouldn't discard him totally. I, I'll take a I'll take a second look at him maybe before I put my tickets in. Okay. So uh, confidence game, I should also note, as you said, the bullet work 59 flat last Saturday covering five furlongs here at Churchill Downs. Tap it Trice, one of the Todd Pletcher trio and one of the two top choices in the Derby pretty much since he came on the scene and did so uh, with uh, quite a splash, literally, at Aqueduct for his maiden win. And then as a three-year-old is three for three, most recently winning the Bluegrass by a neck against uh, Verifying. Five to one on the morning line with Todd Pletcher training and Luis Saez riding. He is a tap it. Can we finally get a tap it to win the Kentucky Derby, Ed? Well, just uh, coincidentally, uh, I get to go first on my top pick, but I do think Tappet Trice is the winner of the Kentucky Derby 149. And the Tappet thing, I mean, I put that in the post-17 bucket, just sort of happenstance. Tappet success on dirt with horses going 10 furlongs and beyond is well documented. Hasn't happened at Churchill Downs yet. This could be the one to break the so-called curse. This horse has not missed a beat. And when we talk about Rich Strike being an upset, which he absolutely was, one of the things I sort of retrofitted to, well, this is why it makes sense, is Eric Reed was always pointing for the Derby. The horse hit every prep race. He was trained as a Derby horse. Yes, he came in as an outsider, but he was able to run his best shot. Tapa Trice checks all of those boxes and is fast and talented, as we've seen in his previous two preps. I love the fact that Todd changed things up with Luis Saez, or not that he changed the Luis Saez, but Luis and Todd in the Bluegrass worked out a different trip than the Tampa Bay Derby. It's the trip right. that can win the Kentucky Derby, as we saw with Orb. I think this horse is prime. The post doesn't bother me at all. I do not understand the consternation of that. And at five to one, I am absolute buyer in Tappet mm. Trice. Johnny, you buying or selling Tappet Trice? I mean, what's not to like? I mean, the horse won at four different tracks. He's okay in the mud. He, you know, he'll do whatever you want. His work as at Churchill, you know, he's not setting bullets, but they're pretty solid works. Uh, yeah, I mean, the horse looks like he has to be used in the first couple of spots. So um, I, that's, that's, I have to use him. What else can I tell you? I just, you know, five to one in dirt. When you look at a 20 horse field, everybody's 20 to one to start. So it was, you know, is he actually a five to one horse? I think he's going off a little bit more than five. So that's good for people that are going to play him. Uh, just no trouble. That's what, that's what the, if no, if this horse runs into no trouble, should be around. And Mark, what do you think? Yeah. For, for all the reasons stated, I think this horse is a, is a big player here. Um, he, he's a great horse. There's a lot to like. Um, I just a little concerned about he's a big horse and, you know, and, He's just kind of a big lumbering horse. And uh, I think on the inside, there's a good chance that he gets taken way back. I actually kind of prefer that. Um, I, I prefer his Tampa Bay race. I'd actually rather see him just kind of, kind of like Rich Strike, just coming from far behind and just kind of making a big run through the stretch. So um, I like him. I think there's a good chance that, you know, he may just run second or something like that. Um, you know, I don't think you can argue too much about the price. I think you got to use him. He's a big player in the race. All right, so from Tap at Trice, we go to, uh, look, another tap, another TAP, Todd Fletcher horse, and that is Kings Barnes at number six and uh, undefeated, by the way. Three for three, didn't get started until January when he broke his maiden at Gulfstream Park and then went to Tampa Bay, won an allowance race there, and then uh, they realized maybe we got something here. So they took him to the Louisiana Derby and at odds of nine to two, he won that race by three and a half lengths. And uh, Todd Pletcher will have Jose Ortiz. Didn't uh, decide on the jock until last week. Put Jose on for a workout. Decided they got along well together. And Todd and Spendthrift said, it shall be Jose. 12 to 1 on the morning line. I will tell you this, by the way. Jose and Erod Ortiz, when they have been matched up in the Derby, 
Uh, Jose's won, I think, just in their personal matchup. Four out of five. Johnny, that's my uh, neato stat of the night for you. Well, you mentioned no races last year, but the three this year are all, all really good, and he's improving every race. And when he gets out and he gets the lead, he's usually gone. Uh, can he do that in this particular race? Who knows? But, you know, I certainly like everything I've seen from the horse so far. Um, it's just that he's he's a little green, that's all. But uh, won't fault anybody for using him. You know, when, when you're putting your tickets together, we're – talking about 20 horses here and so far we've used most of them there's only a couple throwouts and we haven't even got through you know three quarters of the field so i mean he's he looks like he needs to be used but uh it's going to be at the discretion of the of the person how much money you have in your pocket mark are you uh in or out on the other todd yeah I, i'm mostly out i just i'm not sure that he's fast enough i'm not sure he's fast enough early um you know, again, I'm, I'm a little concerned that whoever gets the lead uh, could hang on for a piece. I might put him in that category, but he's not an exact for me. Ed? Yeah, I'm, I'm against uh, red flags of plenty. The, the speed numbers don't really stack up. And the fact that no jockey has remained loyal through three career starts on a graded states winning undefeated Todd Pletcher trainee going to the Derby tells me a lot and it tells me those speed numbers are probably accurate that none of these riders have felt like they absolutely have to have this mount back throw in the justify curse i know he broke the apollo curse since him horses who haven't raced it two are 0 for 10 and have not finished better than 10 justify was just another kind i think there's absolutely something to the two-year-old thing uh we'll see what king's barns does going forward but uh, for the derby he's not for me and uh, Kings Barnes has had Luis Saez, Antonio Gallardo, Flavian Pratt, and as mentioned, Jose Ortiz will be his fourth jock in as many races. Let's turn to the number seven horse, and that is Reincarnate. He is this year's back team, formerly trained by Bob Baffert, or Baff team, plugging ointment here all of a sudden. Gee, I wonder what brought that to mind. Uh, Yak team training, Johnny Velasquez riding. Uh, Johnny had the last two rides on this horse since he was transferred from Bob Baffert, finishing third in the Rebel and then third in the Arkansas Derby. He's by good magic, and he is 50 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, Mark, let's start with you. Yeah, I think this horse is interesting for a few reasons. Uh, one, the 50 to 1 morning line is crazy. I'm not, not really sure where Bataglia is going there. Um, you know, again, we have a race where there's not a lot of speed. And look who's up, John Velasquez. And what did he do with Authentic? He jumped to the lead in a horse that maybe wasn't necessarily a horse that you'd project as the horse on the lead. And he kind of intimidated everybody, held him back, and wired. Then he comes back and does it again on Medina Spirit. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, we just had a little freeze up here of the uh, feed, so stand by. Let's see if we can uh, get that restored. And Jace's road to the outside may be his prime opponent. You know, I could see him maybe moving over, intimidating Florent Giroux a little bit, trying to wrestle the lead away as a clear lead. If he does that at 50 to 1, he will be in the lead coming from home, and he will hit the superfecta. Uh, so I, I think for me, this horse is is a long shot that you do have to consider. Um, and so I, I'm, as I said, I'm, so I'm really concerned about whoever gets the lead in, in a race that's not necessarily too hot. And if it's not him, it could be verifying um, or maybe one other. Um, but I think that's a that's a prime position because one of the pace horses usually does hit the superfecta. Um, so I'm probably still looking more for third or fourth, um, but I don't want to dismiss this horse. Uh, I give I don't really like him to win, um, but stranger things have happened. So mm. it's to me, it's a seahorse that you you, you want to use. And uh, you'd, I don't want to have my top choices run one, two or one, two, three and miss because of this one. Okay. Ed. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Mark on that. I just think, you know, the only, the only chance they have of winning is on the front end. They have a jockey who's shown he's adept at doing it. The profile of this horse for a baffer is mystifying to me though. Debuted on the turf going two turns. Didn't get to the dirt till his third career start. Then finally won gate to wire in his fourth and was the longest shot on the board by far 
against four other Bafferts in a five field sham and one quasi gate to wire. He got headed at one point that the running line says. So really interesting that the next time out with the act team, he got shuffled back. He didn't even make the lead. So a lot of mixed signals in the running lines and not really the typical Baffert triple crown style profile. It's a two-year-old, but he's here and he's going to go to the front. And of the ones we've talked about where Mark said, you know, they sort of hang around, he would be the one I'd be worried about, especially at 40 to one. So uh, in the wagering strategy, but not a win contender. What about for you, Johnny? Yeah, certainly. Uh, Mark mentioned that Jr. knows how to get a horse out. That's for sure, especially in this race. And he's done it before. I like those connections with Starlight. I mean, those guys usually bring a contender to the Derby. But, you know, the, the horses, it took him three times to break his actually fourth time to break his maiden. Uh, all most of the races are in California. And since he was transferred over to Yachtin, he really hasn't done that well. So, um I don't really see this horse as a win contender. Uh, you know, maybe he does go out and maybe he does hold on and get a piece of it, but that's, that's the most I see happening here. Johnny Velasquez has won three derbies actually had a fourth with Medina spirit, but that of course was taken away subsequently by stewards because of the uh, ruling in the uh, drug case that was found after Medina spirit tested positive for beta methasone after what looked like a win in the Derby a couple of years ago. So uh, Johnny V is the winningest jockey in this race as far as derbies are concerned. Number eight is Mage. He was a debut winner, finished fourth in the Fountain of Youth, and then second in the Florida Derby to Forte. He comes in with odds of 15 to 1. Gustavo Delgado has the training chores, and Javier Castellano, a Hall of Famer, looking for his first derby win and trying to avoid uh, well, continuing to be on the schneid in terms of uh, his lack of derby success. So at 15 to one, what do you think, Ed? I'm tossing uh, similar to Kings Barnes. He has the, the two-year-old deal that I don't like. And that was a huge effort in the Florida Derby. Uh, and now he has to come back five weeks later without the two-year-old foundation shipping up, going a mile and a quarter, which pedigree wise, I'm not too concerned about, but this is a huge ask, and we've seen this ask countless times from others besides Justify, and it just doesn't work out. And he's he's taken attention. There are people who like this horse. I understand yeah. why. But, you know, for someone who puts so much stock into the, the two-year-old thing at this price, uh, I have to let him beat me. I'm against. He is, by the way, by good magic, as was Kings Barnes. Johnny? Yeah, he's got that, you know, no base again as a two-year-old. You know, I... When I look at that Florida Derby race, that's not how you win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you know, you're not that far back, and then you make this big move, and then, you know, and then you – well, in that particular race, he got caught by the, the by the Derby favorite, Forte. Um, one thing I would say, I hope he wins the race because before that Florida Derby race, I bet him at 100 to 1 in a future book <laughs> because I thought that he would run good in that race. So I bet it strictly for the value alone. Uh, so I'm holding that ticket, but I don't have a whole lot of faith in it. So uh, if he wins, I'm happy. But if he doesn't win, I'm, you know, probably not going to be using him in, in uh, you know, my exotics. Okay. I'm going to guess you've hedged like nine ways against that thing between <laughs> when you made that bet now. Mark? Yeah, you know, I want to like this horse. Uh, Ed and I drafted him in our Kentucky Derby Fantasy League. Um, like what he's done. And I think his uh, blowing the start races are fairly remarkable. And uh, But, you know, talking to the connections up here, uh, when they got here, I asked them about, have you worked in the gate? And, and they said no. And I'm really concerned about that. Hmm. You know, I would have thought that they would have say, sat back at Gulfstream at their home track where they know the starter, uh, the starters, the gate crew and said, Hey, we need to work in the gate every day for, you know, three or four days. Um, they are, uh, they did say they were going to school on Thursday, but uh, their focus has been on uh, slower works, getting this horse to get the distance. I think they're kind of emboldened in the way he won uh, from off the pace. But uh, as we kind of talked about, that's probably not the way for this horse to, to win. If he, if he were to break on, on top and, you know, sit second or third, I would really like his chances. But as a young horse with only three starts, um, 
I, I have a hard time 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 getting there. So I'm really cooling on him. And uh, I think this is going to be a nice horse down the road. He's got a lot of potential. Uh, and that's something that they've said as well, that he needs two or three more races. And I think uh, he's got a world of potential that he's got to work into. So um, so I, I, I think he's just up against it. Let's go to the horse now that is last in at this point, drew in uh, only a few days ago, and that is number nine Skinner for John Sheriffs, a stone-cold closer who finished third in the Santa Anita Derby. Before that, third in the San Felipe, and his last win was his maiden breaker on his fourth try. But there's a little bit of wise guy buzz about this horse. Uh, Juan Hernandez will be riding in his first Kentucky Derby, and, of course, uh, he's been a terrific rider out in California 20 to one on the morning line. Johnny, we'll start with you. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, his first three races were not very good. And I would say after that American Pharaoh race at Santa Anita, uh, they were probably tossing it in at that point. He, you know, he's, he's running American Pharaoh grade one without a, without a maiden special weight win. Then he finally comes back and wins. He's certainly gotten pretty good the last three races. But what I see in this horse, he seems to find trouble all the time. It's whether he started a race or he gets bumped some, you know, during the beginning of the race. So um, he's been beat by practical move twice. Um, and so, you know, he's running against some of the, uh, you know, better horses as of late. But still, um, I'd like to use him. I don't know if I'm going to for sure. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Mark, what do you think of this curling cult? Curlin, curlin cult, he said. I, I think this is a live long shot. I think this is one of the 20 to ones that could win the race. Uh, I like him a lot. He's, you know, progressed, you know, very well this winter at Santa Anita. That's not, you know, the best track to close from. And he's kind of got like that wide closing trip both times. So each time practical moves kind of hug the rail. He's gone, you know, three wide on both turns and he's trying to get there at the end. Now he gets more distance. He's a curlin practical move by comparison is a practical joke. Uh, so, I, you know, when I was talking with a friend last night, if you had a head to head bet with those two, um, I think it would be 90 <laughs> percent would finish ahead of practical move. Everything's in his advantage here. So um, I think that's a good way to look at this horse. I, I think he's going to be coming in at the end. And I think if the Pletchers uh, have a misstep, this is a horse that you want. I think he's incredibly live sheriffs has won the derby before with Giacomo who was a slow Santa Anita lumbering closer that came in off a of fourth in the Santa Anita derby um so I wouldn't be dissuaded by the third place finish here and uh the price is fantastic Ed uh well I'm excited to get this horse in I, I'm sitting on a 60 to one ticket uh, ah. which, granted he's not too much lower than that it's uh but when he made that move in the Santa Anita Derby and it looked like, man, this horse can win this race. And I'm thinking I'm going to have a 10 or 12 to one horse in the Derby at 60 to one. Didn't quite work out that way, but uh, you know, they, they made it a change, which uh, you know, Victor in both the previous starts perhaps moved a little prematurely. We'll see what kind of trip Juan concocts here, but I do like the horse. Uh, hopefully that's not just confirmation bias, but uh, as Mark noted, the, the signals with the pedigree, and the type of trainer John Sheriffs is just gives you some optimism that that this horse is, is going to fire. And and John is uh, not one that ships lightly. Uh, obviously, his owners want to go. They've been very vocal on social media about how excited they are to be here. I'm sure, that played in played a, a small part in him being uh, you know more aggressive about coming here. But the horse fits, and uh, I, I love having a, a shot at a score in the in the future book. And uh, as we look at this as well, too, I mean, as uh, you take a look at it, whether it's in the future book or for right now, as you uh, look at Skinner uh, being such a, a deep closer, Victor Espinosa was on him for five races in a row, including the maiden breaker. And so suddenly the switch to Juan Hernandez. Can't imagine that Victor was terribly happy uh, about that. Number 10, practical move, also from Cal California Way. This one has been trained all along by Tim Yactino. This one was not with Bob Baffert first. He's by practical joke. Ramon Vasquez, who also uh, has been a terrific writer in California, he will be on board for this one. Uh, he is coming in on a three-race winning streak, including the Los Al Futurity, the San Felipe, and the Santa Anita Derby, happening to be the three races that Vasquez rode with practical move. 10 to 1 on the morning line. Mark? 
Yeah, as I said before, I think he's gotten, uh, he, you know, he's done a lot, but he's gotten dream trips in both races. Uh, so I think he's dressed up a little bit. He, you know, he got the absolute best figure in terms of uh, the trip worked out perfectly. Uh, he wasn't wide at all. It's set up for him. Um, he is a horse that could, you know, he could hang on for third or fourth, but practical jokes aren't doing, uh, they're not setting the world on fire, going a dirt route, going further, uh, maybe even less so. So I'm really look, looking at other horses here. What about you, Ed? Uh, I was a fan, and I'm going to have to update my fair odds line because uh, I'm definitely nervous uh, just about some of the chatter percolating from the backside. Uh, I'm much more inclined to listen to the negative stuff, especially when, you know, the, the horse, when's he coming out, things like that, than I am, oh, this horse looked great. And it, it just seems like the mojo around how this horse is coming into the race this week is is poor. So at a short-ish price, uh, I was willing to take 10 to 1, but now I'm really not so sure. I can't let him completely beat me, uh, especially since I like Skinner. So why not the horse who's, who's beaten him twice? Uh, but I am cooler on him now than I was this time uh, a few days ago. And what about you, Johnny? Well, he's all California, that's for sure. I mean, he's hasn't left the state of California. Uh, still training at California. He's going to get to, to the track late. No, um, he's he's here now, Johnny. I know he is, but he was still training in, in oh, the April. Okay. He was still at he was still in California. So, um, I mean, when I when you look at the last two races, for sure, I mean, he's won three in a row. He's, they do kind of jump off at you to say, you know, he's probably going to be for forwardly positioned and uh, and he's going to make only have to make his one move. So on paper, he looks good. But uh, like Mark said, maybe those trips were all dream trips. I don't know. I think I still has to be used somewhere. He's not certainly not a throw out. So uh, uh, I will have him positioned somewhere. Mm. Yeah, he's been along the rail so much. And now he's going to start <laughs> from the 10 hole. So it'll be interesting to see if and how he will get there this time around. All right, that gets us halfway through the field. Mark, uh, let's go do a little shopping again when we go to picks.horseracingnation.com. I know the super screener isn't the only tool there, although that's certainly one that was a highlight last year based on results. What else would you uh, like to see in the shopping bag that you'd like to go ahead and uh, let us know about? I mean, there's a ton of information there. I use it every day. Uh, I use the Horse Race Nation Pro Reports every day. So many tools, the pace report, uh, sire moves report, which tells you which sire, uh, horses will move up or down based on uh, switching from turf, dirt, synthetic, things like that. Uh, the first time uh, power ratings, which are amazing in terms of getting a line on horses have never run. So I use uh, several reports every day. Um, Ed, what about you? There's so many things there. Yeah, uh, you know, Derby, it's not as, as helpful, but certainly with Churchill just opening the shipper report, I love seeing where the winners are coming from. So I encourage people to check that out. And uh, Paddock Prince, who is a regular on the, the, the RFRP, as well as Dishes with me each week, uh, has gotten off to a hard start at Churchill, a couple pick fours on the sheet. And he'll be loaded for bear for Oaks Derby. We all, we'll have trip notes, which are, are great for upgrades and downgrades. As you said, there's just cornucopia of useful information and it's not always about picks it's about oh i can use this horse at a price underneath or oh, i should add this and uh just gives you a, a great uh helps you map out your day and with 27 races over oaks derby day uh i actually think it's the more information helps you decide which races are the best to bet hey look go to picks.horseracingnation.com we've already That's enticed it. you with a with a lot on the menu, right, Mark? I mean, it's it's just a, a it's like going to a restaurant and not knowing what to choose from, but eventually you're going to find yourself you wanting to sample it all, right? Yeah, it's there's a ton of tools, and uh, I mean, I play the races much much differently than I did three or five years ago, of just focusing on the form, and, and those tools are a big part of it. And and you know, Ed said, uh, you know, Pat Prince does a good job with his picks and tickets. And Trip Notes Pros, which started with us in Keeneland, are fantastic. I, I, I use them for the first time. Really do a great job of highlighting horses that uh, um, were compromised in their last starts and have a good reason uh, for improving. And when you do that, you're getting you know much better price on a horse when you're talking about maybe a hidden trip and things like that. So I found it is a very valuable tool. <clears throat> Easy to find if you're a regular to Horse Racing Nation. Just go to Picks 
dot horseracingnation.com. P-I-C-K-S dot horseracingnation.com. Ron Flatter here at Churchill Downs, joined by Mark Midland, Ed DeRosa, and in Las Vegas by Johnny Avello. And uh, Johnny's going to clue us into something that's going on at DraftKings in a moment. But before we get to that, Let's call on our foursome here. Well, me and then the, the guys who have the real brains here, the threesome who are doing the handicapping here on our hardcore handicappers edition. Let's check out the Kentucky Oaks, where we are hearing that it may rain. In fact, we're hearing about rain between maybe 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Oaks Day. So um, maybe only a tenth of an inch. That's the forecast. And if that's the case, how wet will the track really be? It is the mile and an eighth for the three-year-old Phillies, 5.51 Eastern time on Friday. And uh, the two top choices on the morning line uh, happen to be starting next to one another. That would be uh, the number seven horse, Wet Paint, at five to two, and the number six horse, Botanical, at four to one. They are both trained by Brad Cox. They're coming on heaters with winning streaks. Mark, why don't we start with you? What do you think about the Kentucky Oaks? Uh, What a great race, huh? Um... I love the way botanicals come into this race. Talked to Brad Cox about it this week. He said uh, the way she's trained on dirt is fantastic. So uh, I'm going to lean towards botanical to start. I do like uh, defining purpose for Kenny McPeak. And uh, Mike study with the super screener reminded me that the Kentucky Oaks is more often won by a closer. So that's going to make sure that mm. wet paint in the mix and, uh, and South lawn for Norm Cassie, um, would uh, would be my other closer to kind of keep in the mix. Ed, what about you? Well, if uh, either Punchbowl or Julia Shining uh, were able to draw in, I'd give them a big shot. So how can I not like the horse who beat her? Uh, beat the filly who beat them last out. That's defining purpose. 12 to 1. Great price. Uh, it was on McPeak Hernandez in last year's Derby with Tis the Bomb. Don't like Sun Thunder as much, but willing to run him back here. So I have defining purpose on top. And then one thing that surprised me looking at the Brisnet PPs available at Horse Racing Nation, along with the Derby ones, Flying Connection is the only E-type in here. And I know Mark just <laughs> mentioned the closer. This filly under Florent Giroux, who has won the Oaks, absolutely can go gate to wire against this group. And at 15 to 1, that's the right price to find out. If the closers are coming for her, I like South Lawn in that regard. Uh, so for me, it's defining purpose, flying connection, South Lawn. Johnny, what about you? Yeah, when I first looked at the race, you know, I was checking out Wonder Wheel, and Wonder Wheel's just had a few problems this year. It just doesn't seem the same horse as he was back in uh, late last year. Uh, so uh, the horse that I ended up falling on, I think wet paint is, you know, tremendous uh She's a tremendous filly, so I think she'll uh, certainly make her big move. But there's a horse I think she's going to have to catch, and that's uh, Pretty Mischievous. Um, I think Pretty Mischievous is going to get out of the gate well. It's going to sit in a position either second, third, uh, and get first move on everyone. So that's where I'm going with Pretty Mischievous with probably wet paint trying to catch her. Um, so I think those are the two who are my main horses. Probably use botanical. Uh, now that Ed said, you know, he, Cox says she's been training pretty well on the dirt. Probably going to use her, uh, use her in there also. I'm not going to look past Wonder Wheel. I just think this was too good of a filly last year, and I think that maybe she and Tyler Gaffalion weren't getting along here in recent races. So Joel Rosario <laughs> getting on, and I will take every bit of that price. And by the way, Johnny. You gave me some really good advice not so many years ago as she dares the devil. And I'm still I, I'm still happy to have been paying the rent off of that one for a couple of months. So there is that. Johnny Avello from DraftKings here on the Ron Flatter Racing Pod. Happy to have you back from Las Vegas. And it's interesting because DraftKings actually in a partnership with Churchill Downs, you got a new thing called DK Horse, right? Yeah, we do. You know, and the guy who just mentioned all those handicapping tools. So you know, my I say use all those tools and then come over and bet with DK Horse. Uh, <laughs> man, I've been with DraftKings uh, about five years now, and you know, I tr we tried many times to get our horse business going. We finally did. We're up and running now for about a month. Things are going really well. We're in 15 states now. The one thing that uh, people must know about DraftKings Horse is that. It's a separate app. It's not part of the DraftKings wallet. So you need to download 
uh, DK Horse fund it, and uh, it's and it's great. If if you're familiar with the Twin Spires product, that's basically what it is. Um, the 15 states we're in, we just added Maryland yesterday, but we're also in Colorado, Florida, Indiana, uh, Kentucky, Louisiana, uh, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Montana. Oregon, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wyoming. Wow, that's a mouthful. Thanks for wow, letting me get that's it. that's impressive. Wow, nice. nice. Nice, nice, nice. And by the way, we, we we're, get, we're finally getting sports betting here in Kentucky, uh, you know, pretty soon. I'm hoping by football season, maybe we'll get a little DraftKings action there too, right, Johnny? Uh, yes, Ron, we hope so. We, we <laughs> yeah. want to be everywhere, and anyone that will have us, we'd love to be in that state. Okay, so look for DK Horse, look for DraftKings if you're betting sports, but DK Horse, if you're looking in one of those states that Johnny just mentioned, if you'd like to take advantage of playing DraftKings, playing the horses through DK Horse. Hey, Ron, right, one last thing to mention. Oh, yeah, uh, go ahead, please, please. Yeah, we have a $250 deposit match, so we just have to pay, play through it twice. So that's the offer that we're giving anyone to sign up now. Oh, okay, so... Uh, Swing that by me again, just in case it went in, you know, somebody's ear and right out the other. Yeah. Deposit match of up to $250. Okay. You just have, and you have to play through the 250 twice to get the full. Oh, um, okay. Match. Yeah. It's pretty easy. All right. You know, hey, round horse racing nation, we do that, you know, if we, in the opening race sometimes. So yeah, that's hour. how it works. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Let's get back to the Kentucky Derby and let's uh, pick up where we left off. We got the favorite yet to come, but right now we're going to go to. Uh, the Steve Asmussen horse. Can disarm be an unlikely way for Steve Asmussen to finally get his first Kentucky Derby win? Joel Rosario will be on this long shot who finished third in the Lexington Stakes in a, a top-up race when he looked at the time like he might need the points, but then the defections got him safely into the field anyway. He's by Gunrunner, who, of course, also had uh, been trained by Steve Asmussen. <laughs> He's a maiden winner. He goes off at 30-1. to 1. Ed, I'll start with you. Uh, definitely the horse I like best of the, the 30s and up. Uh, actually, despite the third place finish, uh, it was a forward move on the Ragazin sheet. So this horse is going the right way and definitely one of the ones we've heard uh, the most positive comments about training. I love the fact he came right back nine days after the Lexington, has not missed a beat for the Asmussen barn. Disarm to me is absolutely a player. Mild wind threat at a big price. I won't hesitate to use them on top with the ones I like, but certainly one of my keys underneath. I expect this horse to run really well. Johnny? Uh, you know, he, when I, I go back and I look at the Churchill race, his first start, and then Saratoga, and I kind of compare those two tracks. Horses that at Saratoga seem to do okay at Churchill. My concern with him is that he hasn't really moved up enough, and so he seems a little slow to me at this point, but I could see maybe a piece. All right, Mark? I uh, love this horse. I'm going to make him my top pick as a player. Wow. Uh, not only wow. is Ed said best-looking horse on the backside for the last two weeks, best-looking trainer. Steve has been <laughs> very positive <laughs> about the horse. Um he said that, I mean, they're excited to be here. They've made moves to get into the race. Um, you know, he, he's just in a great mood. Ask him, you know, why do you think the horse, you know, will run well? And he's like, this horse absolutely is going to run well. Um, he just, I think he just hasn't had the chance. You know, he ran the big race at two at two at Saratoga early on, put away, developed, figured things out. And he's been in slow paced races. So I just think we haven't seen his best. He's going to need a little bit of a pace here. But uh, if you go back to that uh, Louisiana Derby where they were sort of crawling, he basically started moving where everybody else was standing still. And I think he outclosed every horse in that field by a half a second or more. Um, I, I just think we, this, is a, this is a horse where we just have not seen the best. Uh, I think Rosario will get a, a good trip. And uh, if things work out right, I think uh, you, you definitely want to have this horse a lot in third under some of the favorites that are contenders that you may like uh, also second. And as Ed said, uh, touch, touch for first as well. And uh, you know, if you can get live to a horse like this and a pick four, pick five, you're looking at box car. So I'm going to do it. Joel Rosario, a one-time Derby winner 10 years ago with orb number 12 for Brad Cox. Again, Jace's road 
Florent Giroux will have the ride, got into the field through some defections, and uh, he comes in off of a third-place finish in the Louisiana Derby. 50-1 to one on the line, by the way. One of the owners of the horse, Joy Taylor, will be on the podcast on Friday. We'll start with you, Johnny. I think the race is just too far for this horse. Uh, I mean, he, he, he nothing really looks that great. The gun runner race at fairgrounds is his best. Uh, lately, he's kind of just kind of hanging around. These are the kind of horses that usually burn me in a derby. Uh, I just don't like them, and I don't want to use them anywhere. But they find a way to just sneak in there and, you know, flop up for third or so. So, but... As of now, this horse to me is uh, is is one of the few that I'm just totally tossing. All right, Mark, what about you? Yeah, just let's make up for time. He's a total toss. Okay, Ed. Uh, not even Brad Cox is talking this horse up. Uh, would completely and utterly shock me if he were involved in any of the wagering outcomes. Okay, we'll let Joy Taylor talk the horse up on Friday then. <laughs> Number 13 is Sun Thunder. Kenny McPeak is going to put blinkers on this guy. He is by Into Mischief. Brian Hernandez Jr., good guy, is going to be riding, uh, coming off of a fourth-place finish in the Bluegrass. In fact, uh, the only win was the maiden win, uh, second out at Oaklawn back on New Year's Eve. 50-1 to one on the morning line, Mark. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of up against it. I think in a normal derby, if it was, uh, you know, like last year, we're looking at a fast pace, then he would be a, a closer that you could, you know, kind of sink your teeth into a little more. I think Kenny even said it is, he said something along the lines of three-year-olds that develop at this time of the year, this horse needs more development. He needs mm -hmm. more things to click through. He's like, if that happens on Saturday, you know, he could be a piece, but I, I've got to throw him out. Ed? He's... To me, it's the, the red strike of this group where, for whatever reason, there is a just complete and total pace meltdown. He has the right jockey to work out that closing trip on a horse who hasn't been good enough to really threaten for the win, but I do think will be running late. So for that reason, uh, you know, I, I could see peppering him only underneath with, you know, some other horses you like. Uh, a win would be a surprise. Uh, certainly not the least likely in the field, those we just discussed with Jace's road, but underneath only. All right, Johnny. Yeah. So this is a horse that, you know, is going to come from the clouds and um, I don't like the horse to be in the top four spots, but how do you bet a horse that you think is going to close and be in the middle of the pack? Well, I think this is a great horse to use in a matchup. So if you can find matchups uh -huh. around, this is a horse you match up against other fifth when bookmakers are going to put him up against other 50 to one shots. And I think that's where you make a little money with him. Interesting. I like that. Just yeah, kind of look for those matchups. Yeah. I, I, that's something I miss about Vegas. We, that, being able and to while go we're at it, let's get Churchill to work with these guys to get the matchups there. Put some pressure on the yeah, Johnny. Put get some put some pressure on these folks. <laughs> right, I'd move to Indiana for the week if I could bet the stuff on on DraftKings over there. <laughs> Johnny, we just got more incentive. Get Ed out of Kentucky. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Angel of Empires, the number fourteen horse. Brad Cox trains. It's a classic Empire. Colt and Flavian Pratt will have the ride. One, two in a row. Both graded stakes. The Risen Star and then the Arkansas Derby, in fact, doing so in the Risen Star, 13 to one, convinced some folks. Then he went off nine to two in the Arkansas Derby. He is eight to one on the morning line here coming out of gate number 14, Ed. This is the one I just don't get, not from a, oh, I don't understand why anyone would like him, but there's some real fervor to this horse. And I think even a week ago, I was thinking he might be 12 to one. I think two or three, I would add him at 15. He is absolutely going to be less than 10 to one. Yeah. Scott Shapiro picked him. James Scully picked him. These are guys people pay attention to. Others have similar styles of handicapping, so others are going to pick him too. I just think he's okay. Uh, so from an eight to one standpoint, when I like a horse like Tappet Trice so much, you can't use them all at that price. And Angel of Empire is one. I just think he's a similar style to Tappet Trice. And if they hit the quarter pull together, I know who I want to win. I know who I think will win the sprint home, and it's Tappet Trice. So Angel of Empire, I think, is just a touch below, and you're not getting the price to compensate. Johnny, what's your read on Angel of Empire? 
I like this horse a lot. Um, and, and the reason I like him is because the horse we're going to talk about next, the favorite, I think they have similar styles. Um, I think they, they have right jockey, uh, right trainer, and the horse just needs to be in the right position and get a good start. Um, I, I think this horse is very dangerous here. So he'll certainly be one of my top picks. Mark? Yeah, I think he's dangerous. I, I think Ed's right. He's maybe a, a little low on the price. But if you're looking to find the winner, hit the exacta, I think this is one of the top you know, six players in the race. And uh, he fits. He's won two derby preps. Uh, one with a bigger close and last time with a, a close, but on uh, maybe not such a fast pace. I think people are just enamored by a closer that, you know, burst out one by over four links last time. And I think that's where the attention is coming from, but he's consistent. He's clearly the best of the Brad Cox horses. So I, I think he fits. Flavian Pratt previous derby winner although it took a steward's decision to make that so but he would be looking for his second victory in this race all right we've been building to this one are you for or against the favorite and that is forte the italian word for strong right johnny it's todd fletcher who is training here with irod ortiz up you got eclipse winners all around here horse trainer jockey the last time the only time Todd Pletcher's had a favorite in this race with more than 60 horses that he's brought to this race, more than any trainer ever. The only other time he had the favorite, he won with Always Dreaming. And so here he is again with a favorite, looking to go for two for two with the top choice. Three to one on the morning line, coming off of his fifth consecutive win. That was in the Florida Derby. That was his fourth grade one win in his career. Man, I, a lot of bona fides here, Johnny. So uh, are, you, uh, are you forte on forte? Well, you know, people talk to me and they say that they don't like this horse. And I think they don't like the horse because he's the favorite in the Derby and nobody likes a short price. But how do you not like the horse? He's always in the mix. Uh, what makes you think he's not going to be in the mix again unless he gets into trouble? But he's got the right jockey on him that knows how to get a horse out, knows needs to know, knows what to do with a horse in a race like this. So... Uh, to, he's winning at a 26% clip this year. And uh, I, I, he has to be in, you have to use him. I mean, how do you throw him out? You only throw him out unless you're looking for some telephone number payoff. But besides that, uh, Forte has to be used. Mark, I don't think you're getting a telephone number payoff on this one, but uh, will you use Forte? Uh, yeah, I agree with Johnny. I mean, I, I think he's got to be used. And, uh, you know, I think to me, this Derby is more top heavy in the sense that, uh, the top contenders are legit. You've got uh, what five or six that are coming off of two wins. And uh, you know, so to me, the way to make money in the race is, you know, maybe if, if your top, you know, three are Forte, uh, Tabba Trice and uh, you know, pick one other, maybe angel of empire, let's say in the trifecta, maybe they take two of the three spots. And then the third spot is where you put in your price, uh, your Skinner, your uh, disarm, your two fills. And then you could even rotate those long shots into second and say those top horses would take first and third. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think Forte is a real contender. I don't think there's, there's nothing that really says to me that he has to win. Um, but I think like Johnny said, people are knocking him because he's a favorite. I think he's, he's going to hit the board for sure. Ed. Yeah. I'm, I'm eager to see where the price is. I mean, Mark and I have, have argued for weeks now. I mean, I couldn't believe that this horse wouldn't be five to two, which was his price before the Florida Derby in the last future wager. People are holding a ticket at five to two. He won the Florida Derby, and he's going to be a higher price now five weeks later. But that's the way Wait, Derby what, buzz goes. What was that? He's going to be higher. And I'm not buying. I'm not buying that either, Mark. <laughs> well, well, we'll we'll see what Matt we'll puts into the pool. But the, the bottom line for me, even though I prefer Tappet Trice a little bit, Forte is absolutely in the mix. Horses do not get passed like he got passed by a good horse in Mage at the eighth hole and come back and win. Uh, I've seen a lot of races. I can't think of the last time, if ever, I've seen that. Mage made a winning move, and Forte dug in and got the job done. And then by the time they hit the wire, actually won comfortably. wasn't like he just got him by a nose. This is a very serious race horse. The price is, 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 a, is a touch light relative to tap at Trice. But as Mark said, if Skinner and Disarm are in the mix, Forte is on every ticket. And Ron, we should just also say that uh, Mattress Mech is coming to the Derby. Uh, the Horse Racing Nation team is helping him. 
He's going to do a, a bet on the favorite. So that's going to be on Forte. Um, probably in the million, million five range. And one of the things we're going to help him do is spread some of that out into doubles and exactas and other things. So uh, it doesn't all go down to crush the wind pool price. And, uh, you know, as we saw Epicenter last year, he bet Epicenter and he still only went off at 410 to one. So uh, it doesn't, I think, have as big of an impact as everyone thinks. I thought when you said you were going to help Mattress Mac, I was thinking like, what, are you going to you give him a fiver? Uh, you know, it's been great. We'll look forward to that, by the way. That's that's going to be great what fun. A, when he, what a great guy. Yeah, and a oh great my, humanitarian. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. DraftKings um, probably likes him too. Yeah. You ever met Mattress Mac, Johnny? Are you kidding? He's my customer. <laughs> <Yeah>. Of course. <laughs> Yeah. Just double checking. Wanted to make sure. Let's go to number 16, Ray's Kane. Ben Colbrook uh, trains this one. When he won the Gotham, Ben was in his car on his way to get a ride to get a flight to Turfway Park. He didn't even get to see the horse's biggest win. He finished fifth in the bluegrass after that. He uh, got a little bit scorned, I would say, when Javier Castellano said he was going to ride. Then he moved off and went to Mage. And so Gerardo Corrales winds up getting the call. Uh, to get the ride here. And in fact, uh, Corrales rode his maiden breaker at Keeneland back in October. He's by violence and he is 50 to one on the morning line. Mark. Yeah, I, I think he's just up against it. That, that uh, Gotham was in the mud. It totally set up for a closer. Uh, you know, it was just, just a blazing pace and he got up. I, I mean, I can see why they're here, but I mean, he ran fifth in the bluegrass. Uh, he doesn't really have any chance. All right, Ed. Yeah, no, don't give him a chance to be in the mix in any shape whatsoever. Johnny? Uh, Churchill Downs, one race, terrible race. Not that, you know, at the mud rate, one win in the mud there, that was it. If Rosario couldn't get him in the top four spots, you know, why is Corrales going to do that? He tap it trice, verify, and both beat him up pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't see it either. Let's jump then to number 17 and jump across an ocean to bring in Derma Sotogake from Japan. Hidetaka Otonashi is the trainer. Christophe Lemaire will get the ride. He's by Mind Your Biscuits. I, it was, somebody pointed this out. How odd would it be if this horse won and Mind Your Biscuits mm -hmm. got a derby win before a tap it? But uh, that could be the case. Wise guy horse in a lot of ways here, 10 to one on the line after winning the UAE Derby by five and a half lengths. I would warn two things from, well, I'll get to my two things. You guys may bring them up anyway. Ed, I'll start with you. I'm against this horse, uh, you know, similar to the two-year-old thing. I, I just think the UAE shippers have shown that they, we're not talking about an offer where they've had a few good races and, oh, if things would have gone their way, they could have won. They have not contended for a derby win in any shape whatsoever. And, and some of them don't lose the race at the gate like Mendelssohn and Thundersnow. So until we see any sort of competitive fire, I don't know how you can take 10 to 1 on a horse shipping from UAE to the Kentucky Derby. We all know what Japan's done here and throughout the world. Certainly have a ton of respect for their training regimen. Uh, but this isn't about what Japan and how they handle their horses. To me, it's just the ship from UAE. It's a big ask on six weeks rest to come here and run a mile and a quarter. And you're taking a short price in this case. Uh, I have to toss them. Johnny. You know, no horse has ever won out of 17 and I shouldn't ever use that for handicapping purposes. And I won't, but it's, it is a fact. So, um, you know, he's, he works at Churchill aren't jumping off the page. Uh, the one positive I see to this horse is that they had Lanari ride him in the UAE Derby. So it's not going to be, you know, a Japanese jockey riding him. So it's a, a, someone that's more familiar with the track. But, yeah, um, he's. Well, wait a minute, John. No, 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 it's, no, it's Lemaire, not Lannery. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, because I got a point about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yep. OK, so, yeah, scratch that then. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm not really interested, but he's going to be bet. He's, you know, he's the talk. And so he's probably going off 10 to one, maybe, maybe less than 10. All right. And Mark. Yeah. I mean, 
I hear all that. I, I, I don't really want to use an overseas shipper, but uh, I think this one is a lot more accomplished than any of that have come over before. Uh, I think he does have a good post, good jockey, and uh, they can kind of sit and see how things shake out. So I'm going to use him defensively. I don't want to be overly dismissive. Um, but again, only with some of the long shots that I'm looking at. Here's the other thing I was going to mention. The 0 for 18 for UAE Derby horses coming into the Derby. None finishing better than fifth. Let me throw this in about the jock. Christophe Lemaire, uh, he rode 13th place crown pride last year. It was his first race here at Churchill Downs in 10 and a half years and his first ever on the main track. He will ride three races on Saturday. The other two are turf. He will have his second ever ride on the main track here and it will be in the Kentucky Derby. I won't put a cent on this horse. To me, betting on a UAE Derby horse is like the definition of insanity. But if he wins, I'll be cheering louder than anybody because I just love dealing with the folks from Japan who are in the racing game. Let's go to Rocket Can. Bill Mott trains and puts blinkers on this into mischief cult. Junior Alvarado will have the ride. Uh, fourth time in a row, he rode the Holy Bull win, a second-place finish in the Fountain of Youth, and in the Arkansas Derby, uh, he was fourth there. 30-1 to one on the morning line. Johnny? Yeah, in his last race, he goes off the chalk in the Arkansas Derby because he ran second to Forte in the Fountain of Youth. Um, you know, I do respect Mott and, uh, you know, always have to be aware of his horses that are in the race. Uh, he's a you know, a couple race at Churchill Downs are pretty good. And of course, you know, you'd like to see that. So he's a horse that probably another one, like, can you, how many can you use in your, you know, your gimmicks? But, uh, <laughs> he, he's another one to me that probably should kind of be used, uh, somewhere in maybe the third or fourth spot. Mark. Yeah, I think he's mostly a toss for me. I think maybe in a different year with a little more pace, but he's on the outside and, uh, you know, he's just kind of a grinder. Actually, a friend called him a mega grinder. Um, <laughs> he just, uh, you know, he kind of keeps coming, but he never really gets there kind of type. And so uh, I don't know that that really fits for this year's Derby. Ed? Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's he's probably a, even a touch below Sun Thunder for me uh, in that I would absolutely wouldn't mind seeing him be fourth if the super comes Tapatrice, Skinner, Forte, Rocket can then, you know, to me, I'd much rather have him fourth than a horse like Angel of Empire. Uh, but a, a win seems out of this one's reach based on what we've seen in the last two. Mott's only win in the Kentucky Derby was with Country House when Maximum Security was disqualified four years ago. Number 19 is Lord Miles, Safi Joseph Jr., will be training with Paco Lopez riding. Uh, Paco had the win last out in the Wood Memorial at 59 to 1. I will say this, this horse has developed some gait issues in his last three uh, races. He is 30 to 1 on the morning line. He's a curling baby. Mark, what do you think about Lord Miles? Yeah, I don't have any interest. I mean, he, um, you know, he ran a good race in the Wood uh, got up in a three horse photo. I think he's in too deep here. He has a bad post and, uh, just doesn't fit. Ed. I'd say I'm a little more bullish than Mark, uh, cause he did win last out number came back surprisingly well. on pretty much everywhere I, I look not saying it was great, but maybe a little better than we were expecting based on the blanket finish with a maiden. Uh, to me, I'd put him with the, in the rocket can category. If I'm absolutely right about everything else. Uh, I wouldn't want Lord Miles to beat me, uh, uh, you know, out of a price similar like a horse like Battle of Midway or that other one that Hollendorfer had who was fourth in the Justify year. But certainly a win would be a surprise. Johnny? Uh, yeah, 59 to 1. That's the Wood Memorial is best race by far. Uh, I don't know if he even gets close to repeating that horse. Workouts are not that good. Um, not, not, not a horse I'm using. Okay. And that brings us to the uh, last horse in the main field at this point right now, and that is Continue R, another one from Japan. Yoshida Yahagi, the very colorful trainer and uh, uh, often compared to like Bill Mott uh, or uh, Shug McGahee as far as 
uh, the ranking of trainers if we were to compare them in Japan to who we have here in the United States. This horse finished a distant third in the UAE Derby, and then they decided to use the automatic berth that he had earned through Japan races to come into this race. Uh, he did that with uh, win in what was called the Catelia Show Stakes in Tokyo on what was our Thanksgiving weekend. So uh, he had a miserable workout here about a week ago, and it was uh, did not get good reviews in any way, shape, or form. Ryusei Sakai is the jockey, good young jockey. I think he's the youngest jockey in the race, in fact, and uh, he comes in uh, with a head of steam, having uh, really carved out a good career for himself at a young age in Japan, but 50 to one on the morning line. Ed, I'll start with you. I'd book every penny I could afford to lose at, at 50 to one. Uh, I see this horse as the least likely winner. Uh, the workout, as you noted, was abominable. And he was third to a horse. I'm not that interested in either from the prep. I never want to use. So there is not a single bullet point to recommend this horse for me. Total toss. All right. With all that cockeyed optimism from Ed, Johnny, what do you think of Continuar? <laughs> well, you go back to November and Sotagake beat this horse by in a very close race. But since then, it seems like one horse is going one way and the other's going backwards. And this is the one that's going backwards. So, yes, I agree with Ed. Mark? Yeah, I can't see it. Can't recommend it. As simple as that. I think we're unanimous on continue on. All right. There's some uh, also eligibles. Let's get to them because of what happened last year. Uh, number 21 last year was Rich Strike. Number 21 this year is Cyclone Mischief. Dale Romans trains. Joel Rosario is listed as the rider, but the only way Rosario will ride is if Disarm comes out of the race because Joel's first preference is Disarm. So Dale might have to shuffle the deck if somebody comes out. Uh, he was third last time out in the Florida Derby, uh, penciled in at 30 to one. Johnny, what do you think of Cyclone Mischief? Uh, what I think of is, is Dale Romans. He's dangerous and, you know, he's, he'll make you some money with a, with a pricey horse, but, um, yeah, no, he's, he's another one of those horses that, you know, you can't use them all. I, I wouldn't use out of that, out of that 20 post. Mark. Yeah, I mean, a horse is, is doing all right. He did all right. Florida is getting better. Um, this is a race without a lot of speed. Uh, Dale had said if he gets in, there's a good chance that he he would send the horse. So I would look at him maybe as a horse that could hang on, as I've been talking about, for for third or fourth in, in a try or super. Um, he's a horse um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely coming. Dale loves to run the derby. So if, uh, if, if he can get in, he's running. Ed? Yeah, I would say this uh, fits that bill. Mark's mentioned several times where the pace setter does tend to hang around uh, at least one of the ones on the, the first flight and Cyclone Mischief has the look of one who could be one of those if drawn in and you're, you're going to get a premium is the number 21 regardless. So uh, I, I think he's usable underneath it, Ben. All right, so uh, that's uh, the... Cyclone mischief angle then. And uh, I did talk, I asked you about cyclone mischief, didn't I? John? Yeah, that's where we started. I, I got to keep track of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Mandarin Hero uh, from Japan. To me, if there was a Japan horse that was in the race that I would have liked, it would have been this one. But the way the point system worked this year and they revised it, uh, his second place finish in his only race in the road to the Kentucky Derby, that was in the Santa Anita Derby, wasn't good enough to get him in. Taro Nobu Fujita is the trainer. Kazushi Kimura, who is uh, like the mayor of Woodbine here in recent years and has been riding this winter at Santa Anita, he would be the jockey if he gets in. Uh, the Shanghai Bobby Colt is 20 to 1 on the morning line. Ed? I would like him if he gets in. I agree with you. I love the fact that they actually prepped here. Uh, now, it, it would be a surprise if he gets in at this point. He needs two defections. So I will say, you still have an opportunity to bet him this week because he is involved in the Preakness future wager. Ah. And the connections have said they are going to the Preakness. And the way it looks like this bet's getting bet, uh, people are favoring the Derby horses. You know, they want to be live to a potential Triple Crown type horse with the Derby winner at Pimlico. And Mandarin Hero, I think, is offering value in that pool. So if you like him for the Derby and would like him if he draws in, Take a look at that Preakness pool because you have an opportunity uh, to get what I think is a pretty decent price. So I have a lot of respect for this horse's talent. Uh, I'd certainly slot him in the middle tier should he draw in. 
but he's a Preakness player if he doesn't. Mark, you looked eager to jump in on that. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I was going to say, Ed, you just stole my line. He's 18-1 to 1 in the Preakness future wager. There's over 160000 in that pool, so there's a lot of money uh, that would indicate those prices are going to stay to some degree. And, uh, Ed, what do you think he goes off in the Preakness? Eight? Yeah, at least. Yeah, eight or, or I'd say even less. I'd like uh, to look at that. Yeah. If it's a typical derby where uh, the derby winner comes in, maybe a derby fourth, fifth, eighth, comes in the race. Um, you know, the derby winner's favorite. First mission that won the Lexington would be the second choice. This horse could be the third choice in the Preakness at, uh, at nine to two or five to one. And he's 18 to one right now. Johnny, what do you think of Mandarin Hero? Uh, really impressed with the Santa Anita Derby race, um, and and everything behind that looks good. Although you know I, I haven't seen any of those races, um, but if Forte is not the winner of the Derby, and you guys think he may go to the Preakness, um, he may even be shorter than that. So um, thanks for the insight, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we're, uh, we're here to make money in whatever pool offers value. It doesn't have to be the Derby that's pool. Absolutely right. If not for a nose and a neck. Mandarin Hero would be undefeated through six races. Most of his races have been uh, at a track, Tokyo City, uh, which is kind of like maybe an Ellis Park if you're looking for an equivalent as far as the competition there. And finally, the last of the also eligibles who is uh, entered for the race is King Russell for Ron Moquette, a creative cause called who's a closer. Rafael Bejarano would get the ride coming off a second in his stakes debut in the Arkansas Derby at 50 to 1. Mark? I mean, it's highly unlikely that he gets in. Um, the one thing I did want to say about this horse is, you know, people have given it, you know, zero look at all is uh, this is the time of the year that three-year-olds improve. And uh, it's, it's, you know, he was 58 to one and he closed for second in a race that had a, you know, average to maybe a slightly above average pace. And that's what happens in Derby preps and in, in three-year-olds this time of year. So you know, as we look at if this horse goes to the Preakness, I wouldn't be totally dismissive of him. Um, I think he's up against it in this crew in the Derby. But uh, and in the Preakness future wager, King Russell is not listed. So he is in the all others mm. at 18 to one as well, which is just a whopping price to get uh, may end up being three or four or five horses in the all in the Preakness future wager. All right, Johnny. Last race was uh, his best. Just overall, the horse looks a little bit too slow for this Derby. Uh, Preakness, it's a, that's another race to talk about on another day. All right, Ed? Would love to see him get in because uh, maybe he'll take LeBron James fan and Michael Jordan fan money as number 23, uh, but otherwise uh, <laughs> couldn't recommend him as a wagering prospect. All right, and there you go. We've gotten through all 23. We're going to get a final word from uh, each of our panelists as far as uh, maybe a punctuation mark on how they will play the Derby. Let me remind you the past performances heard on the Ron Flatter Racing Pod are provided by Brisnet, the only place where you can find Kieran speed points, the easy way to map the pace in any race. Find out more for yourself at brisnet.com. A reminder, we will have the Friday episode of the Ron Flatter Racing Pod, and uh, among the guests, we're uh, looking to get Todd Pletcher and cornering him, and we will have... Uh, the trainer and jockey of two fills, Larry Ravelli and Jareth Loveberry, Yoshida Yahagi. We'll talk about his long shot continue our Joy Taylor from FS1 and our <coughs> friend Steve Kornacki from NBC Sports will be donning the khakis and talking to us on the Friday edition. And if you're just listening to this pod and you want to see us all talk about this, and maybe that's a more comfortable way for you to go ahead and take notes. If you're uh, checking this out afternoon on Thursday, it's up on YouTube at the Horse Racing Nation page. Let's go back to everybody on the panel right now, and we'll start with the man we, uh, well, we kind of miss from not uh, being in Vegas way anymore, but we're happy to have him from DraftKings and DK Horse. Johnny Avello, your final word on how you'll play the Derby. Uh, I'm going to use Angel of Empire on top, probably tap it twice also, those two on top. Uh, Forte in the second spot. And then a bunch of other horses uh, underneath. It, that's for the for the uh, exotics. But uh, I still like Angel of Empire and Tapit Trice in the top spot. I may I don't not sure which one I'm going to end up settling on. Maybe both if the prices are right. Excellent. All right, he is Mister Fair Odds, our handicapper extraordinaire, Ed DeRosa. 
Uh, Tampa Trice for me on top, certainly at five to one, uh, would, would really see him as, as a key play in the verticals. From a wagering standpoint, though, because I do think Forte uh, is very much in the mix and hard to dismiss, even as the favorite, uh, the key for me is, is Skinner or Disarm is, is going to have to be in the Superfecta. Uh, at 20, 30 to one ish. Uh, so I'm going to need one of those in there along with Tappet Trice or Forte. Uh, and then I'll, I'll spread around from there. But that those are pretty much my two key opinions. The top two Pletchers with Skinner or Disarm and then uh, hope, you know, I'm, I'm right about none of the tosses being in there, but that's how I'm playing the race. The boss at Horse Racing Nation is also the boss of uh, some really interesting tickets let's see what mark midland has come up with i'm a little similar to ed um i'm gonna look at those uh long shots so disarm skinner and i think you can add two fills and the thing you, you got to remember is when you're keying around 20 30 45 to one shots is uh they're gonna pay extremely well and so you can get a little bit wider with some of the some of the other horses so i'm gonna look for one of those three to hit in the trifecta and then use with the two logical pletcher the two top pletchers and Angel Vampire. That'd probably be the my main focus. And, and I'm going to go a little higher than that. I'm going to use those long shots in second and even, you know, touch them a little bit and win. And for me, in some way, shape, or form, I'm going to be boxing uh, Forte, tap it trice, disarm, and I'm going to lean on verifying. I'm still going to try and play that formula play I was telling you about earlier, despite the coming out of the two holes. So those are the opinions. As we mentioned, check out the tools at Picks dot horse racing nation.com and we'll look forward to having your company again when we reconvene later in the week uh in the friday episode my thanks again to mark midland ed DeRosa, and johnny avello so from churchill downs this is ron flatter reminding you of what they said in the movie let it ride you could be walking around lucky and not even know it there you go